Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech, and welcome to Tech in a Nutshell, the show in which I can hide my lack of charisma and storytelling abilities simply by jumping straight to the point. In this episode, we're going to talk about browser and device fingerprinting. The Electronic Frontier Foundation defines digital fingerprinting as the process where a remote site or service gathers little bits of information about a user's machine and puts those pieces together to form a unique picture or fingerprint of the user's device. In order to get a better picture on how serious this actually is, we're first going to take a quick look at a more, for lack of a better word, traditional form of online user tracking, cookies. Cookies are text files that websites store on your computer in order to keep track of your activities. They can contain information that a website can use in order to make your future visits faster and more convenient, like login information, language settings, layout customization, etc. But most of the information they store is stuff they can use to better serve you with personalized ads and products you're more likely to buy the next time you visit. This type of information can also be stored on the website's servers, while you only get an ID that links to it. Now, if you delete that cookie slash ID, the link is gone, and they have no way of knowing who you are. Or do they? Well, this is where fingerprinting comes into play, as it creates a link between you and the information they have on you that is borderline impossible to break. There are two main forms of fingerprinting, and the first one we're going to talk about is browser fingerprinting. When you click on a link in order to visit a website, your web browser sends a request to the website server along with information which is necessary for you to actually receive the requested content. Typically, that would include things like your IP address and the particular browser you're using. But of course, that's not all. Browsers can send out far greater sets of information. The data points can include CPU and GPU specifications, operating system details, browser extensions, time zones, fonts, battery levels, and much, much more. These data points can be collected across several different websites that are tied to the same tracking company and used in order to create a unique fingerprint that can very successfully recognize and isolate a specific user. Typically, browsers do not send out identity information, but a browser fingerprint can easily be tied to an identity when a user logs into a site that already knows who that user is, like Facebook, for example. The second form of fingerprinting is known as device fingerprinting, and it's pretty much the same thing as the previous form, with the main difference lying in the fact that the information is extracted through apps rather than a browser. On desktop computers and laptops, we mostly use browsers to interact with the web. But on devices like smartphones and tablets, we mostly use apps. And wouldn't you know it, apps can also send out a bunch of information, including your IP address, Mac address, Google or Apple ID, international mobile equipment identity, the device serial number, various sensor data, etc. By using just some of these data points, tracking companies can not only create a unique fingerprint for your device, but if your Android or Apple ID is tied to a credit card number, which is tied to a name, they can even find out who you actually are. And since this information is stored externally and your device and or browser characteristics are the ID, severing the link is a task far more complicated than deleting a cookie. Now, even though fingerprinting is mostly used for advertising purposes, it can have a number of other real life implications as well. Here's just one quick quote unquote hypothetical example. Imagine some people got banned on YouTube, whether it's because they actually did something bad or their videos just rubbed someone the wrong way, politically, ideologically, or however. Those people, of course, would not be able to create new channels using their same Google accounts. But not only that, if Google and YouTube had access to their digital fingerprints, they wouldn't last long on the platform even if they created brand new ones. They would still be identifiable based on their browser or device characteristics. And mind you, this is just one pretty lightweight scenario in comparison to the sinister things that can go down if device and browser fingerprints are used in conjunction with permanent location tracking, which, by the way, is also a thing. Now, after all said, the logical question would be, how do you stop such a thing? And unfortunately, it's very difficult to give a straight answer. The fact of the matter is that there is no way of countering fingerprinting without making substantial sacrifices to convenience. And even if you do make those sacrifices, Currently, there is still no single thing you can do, or even a number of things for that matter, that would be 100% effective all the time. When it comes to countering browser fingerprinting, the EFF and a number of other authorities recommend using the Tor browser, which has put a lot of effort into combating the issue. Some people also recommend using specialized tools and disabling particular browser features, but while these types of measures can stop certain information from going through, 
They also have the potential of creating their own sets of characteristics, which again can be used for creating a fingerprint. And as for the case of device fingerprinting, well, if you're gonna use a standard Android or Apple device that is connected to Google and Apple respectively, then there's really no way around it. So, uh, yeah. What wonderful news. That wasn't depressing at all. Anyway, that would be all for today. Since this was an in a nutshell episode, I'm gonna leave a bunch of links in the description which you can check out if you wanna do your own research and maybe dig a little deeper into the methods of countering the issue. Really hope that you found this video helpful and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and as always, stay strong.